has come. You guys, it's been almost seven years since I've built a complete new rig from scratch, but I've got all my components here and it is gonna be a beastly rig. Thank you so much for joining me today. I can't wait to share the experience of building this together with you. So let's get it on. Before we start tearing everything open and putting things together, I wanna to go through the components of the build with you. First up is the Height Y60 case, which is a medium sized case and has some really beautiful design elements to it that I can't wait to see and share with you guys. I'm going with an Intel 12700K CPU, the Samsung 980 Pro M.2 for my boot drive, 32 gigs of G-Skill Trident DDR5 RAM, the Carbon Wi-Fi MSI MOBO, I'm going all NZXT for my cooling and a Corsair 1000 watt plus platinum power supply. And last but not least, the MSI 3080Ti. If at the end of this video, you guys are interested in learning more about these components or building this rig yourself, I'm gonna put links in the description below for every component so you guys can go check it out. As I set things up here, I am gonna be sharing with you each step of the build and talking about the components I picked and why I picked them. First up, let's prepare the motherboard. And like I mentioned, I went with the MSI Z690 Carbon. It's an LGA 1700 ATX board. And not only did I really like the look of this design, but I wanted it to match my GPU. Utility wise, it has all the additional USB ports that I need for my audio and recording equipment. And it has excellent transfer rates. All right, let's drop this CPU in. I went with the i7-12700K and I thought about upgrading to the 12900K chips, but those ended up only being about a 3% performance increase from the 12700K for more than $500 more the cost. The 12900s do come with four more efficiency cores, but I really won't need those, especially when I can just overclock the 12700K. Let's drop this RAM in, and I went with 32 gigabytes of the G-Skill Trident, which is sleek looking and has minimal RGB. I wanted this build to have a balanced RGB look, and the G-Skill Tridents really find a nice balance there with how much lighting are on them. It's DDR5 6000 speed with a CAS latency of 36, which is the fastest I could go without really breaking the bank. For memory, I went with a Samsung 980 Pro one terabyte M.2 drive as my boot drive and for my main programs. I've actually never used an M.2 drive before, so I'm really excited to check it out and take advantage of how fast these things are. Let's prep the case here. Like I mentioned, I went with the Height Y60. It's a beautiful case with a three-piece panoramic glass front that just looks awesome. The design that went into this thing is some pretty cool shit. And I actually watched a height development video where they went into detail about why they made the decisions they made when they designed this. They showed some of the prototypes before landing on the final design and just talked about why they wanted to make it. And it really turned out to be a beautiful case. It was actually designed with water cooling your entire system in mind, but they do have intake fans blowing air up from the base of the case, giving fresh cool air directly to your GPU, which is sitting vertical and facing out. All right, you guys, we are about halfway. So far, the build has gone pretty smooth. There's a couple issues that I'm foreseeing and uh, still trying to figure out what I'm going to do. The first of which is I thought that there were three intake fans at the bottom of the case, but there's only two. Now, the case did come with a third fan that was mounted at the top back for outtake. However, there's no room at the bottom for a third fan. I'm not exactly sure what my plan is here. I either want to have balanced intake and outtake or have more intake and less outtake. Uh, preferably the former. Being that it's a medium case, the motherboard is sitting flush to the back of the case, so when I put a fan on the inside, it would be covering some of the lit up dragon, which uh, aesthetically is another thing that I'd like to avoid. One idea I have is to put a fan 
mounted on the back that's shooting in, have the two CPU fans blowing out, and have this third one on the top also blowing out, which would give me three intake and three outtake. The second issue that I have is I accidentally bought a CD version of Windows 11 and uh, there's no CD drive on this computer. <laughs> now I do have this old ghetto, it's, it's even sticky, external CD drive that would plug in via USB. So I'm gonna try to use this. Uh, if it doesn't work, I'm might be out of luck and have to buy another copy. Outside of that, the build has been really smooth and both these issues are easily solvable. So let's crack into these fans and this power supply and finish this build. For cooling, I'm using the NZXT Kraken X63 for my CPU cooler and an AER NZXT 140 millimeter fan to have some additional outtake for the back of my case. Again, these aren't too heavy on the RGB lights. They look sharp and I'm a big fan of NZXT designs and their quality. And the case is actually designed to have the CPU fans blowing out the side of this case. And as long as I have the piping set up correctly so that air bubbles don't get stuck up by the cooling element for my CPU. This thing should run quiet and keep my system cool for a long time. Now is the time to apply the thermal paste to the CPU in preparation for the cooler. And you know, I've got a little bit of an unorthodox opinion about how much to put on here. I really like to put it on, guys. <laughs> here we go, here we go. Here we go. The NZXT comes with some thermal paste already applied on it, and uh, you only ever want to put a pea sized amount of thermal paste on there. <laughs> For the power supply, I went Corsair using their HX1000. It's a fully modular plus platinum power supply, and I thought going a thousand watts would be future proof, but the NVIDIA 4000 series is speculated to need more than that, which is just some crazy shit. However, this one is still great and my 3080 Ti should treat me really well for several years to come, so it's all good. Finally, the graphics card, you guys. The GPU I went with is an MSI 3080 Ti. It has 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory with a triple fan design, and it just looks gorgeous. MSI is my favorite GPU designer, and this one looks incredible and goes great with my motherboard. They are the perfect pair to show off together in the Height Y60 case. Toasty! All right, now that that's in place, we are getting close to being done, you guys. The last thing that I like to do before testing if it'll post is to clean up all the cables in the back and really tidy things up and make it look nice. Good cable management is important in my opinion, so I really like to make sure that it's tidy in the back, even if you can't see it. All right, you guys, we have completed the build. It looks hella good. I'm so happy with it. I definitely ran into a few bumps with cabling and the fans, but I was able to work around it a little bit and had to do some custom stuff and tweak a few things, but it turned out really good. So we are at the final step where it's time to see if this thing will post. I've got everything plugged in and ready to go. So all we have to do is hit the power button and see if we can get to BIOS. Now the moment of truth. Okay, fans are turning on. No lights going to the uh, CPU fans, but they are spinning. Hmm. Oh, please under setup configuration, F1 to set up. Oh, I think we got it. Okay, we're restarting. Restarting again. Come on, baby. Yes! <laughs> Success, you guys! All 
right. We did it! Now, the next issue that I have to solve is to see if I can get Windows booted in, uh, but I've got a couple other things to do today, so I'm gonna save that for my part two video. Hold up, I just couldn't wait to show you guys the final product. I was running into some lighting issues with my NZXT cooler and the additional fan that I put in, but I was able to solve it and check it out. Classic mistake. One of the pin headers that I installed, I put in a little bit to the right, leaving one of the pin heads out so the connection wasn't true. After some troubleshooting, I was able to figure it out and check out how good it looks, you guys. Currently, I have everything set up to a purple configuration and mm, it just looks damn good. This was an absolutely kick-ass build, you guys, and I'm so happy that I got to share the whole experience with you. Oh, and check it out. <laughs> got Windows running using this old ass USB CD player. <laughs> so glad that that worked out. So all the problems that I had encountered are fixed. I'm gonna put links in the description below for all the components that I used. So if you wanna check any of them out or build this rig yourself, you can do so. And if you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments below. I would love to wrap with you guys about any other questions or comments you have about the build. Thank you again for joining me and I will see you on the next Curbs Garage.